you? Good. Nice to see you again. Always. <laughs> so, some exciting new show. Yes. Hi. <laughs> I'm very excited about the show, and I've been kind of giddy about it. So it's probably sounding a little tired, but like I just am so into it. We are enjoying writing it so very much. And I was just saying at the next table, we've been finding it as we go because everything changes in your brain when you start to see it on the screen or see it on the page. But we're living in a very fun, high-energized version of the show that I'm loving. Well, tell us about how Alaric's going to be kind of with Hope coming on board. She's such a powerful team with an iconic name. Is he going to be intimidated by her? Is he going to be intimidated by her? Alaric has what I would like to say, sort of like the the Giles and Buffy or the Dumbledore and Harry Potter dynamic with Hope. He's uh, a mentor. He's a friend. He's a, a boss. He's the you know the headmaster. He cares about her because he knows the damage that she's experienced over the course of her very, very dramatic life, uh, and he finds himself wanting to take care of her in spite of his absolute distaste for her father. So uh, <laughs> he's like her school dad, and uh, and that's a dynamic I think that, that he particularly likes, and she's always like, why? Like, why? You could just be my headmaster, you know. All this other stuff, it doesn't come with the job description. It's a cute relationship, and, and I've been enjoying writing it. Are there any specific themes you're trying to hit this season? <laughs> What's the sort of thing that I know Archie The big thing that defines this show is this idea that all of us, as we are coming of age and, 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 and approaching adulthood, are saddled with some kind of heavy baggage, whether it's a little, you know, whether it's a mental illness or depression or self-esteem issues or dying to fit in or a lack of, of, of um, a lack of self uh, or anything more extreme than that, uh, things that plague kids and people today anyway. And not, these kids not only have those issues, but they're heightened with supernatural context. So they're just trying to be the best versions of themselves. They're fighting against a lot that's working against them from the inside out, whether it be a genetic curse or, you know, a mystical problem or just a shitty upbringing. And they're learning how to manage and cope and deal in a world that doesn't really, would never understand them. And they have to suck up a lot because they can't expose who they really are. So uh, it's about trying to get through the day and on the road to fighting against the darkest impulses inside of you. We've heard the twins described as kind of like the mean girls in school. What's up with yeah. that? Yeah. Well, you know, if you remember Caroline Forbes when we met her in high school, she had opinions. And Josie and Lizzie, it's not that they're mean, it's just that they're very confident, or at least they seem to be. They love to say what's on their minds. They love to be in charge. Lizzie specifically loves to get the last word. And so when they have a character like Hope, who's taking up a lot of their father's attention, and who they feel like is a little bit stuck up, and a little bit aloof, and they've tried really hard in their minds to be friends with Hope Michelson for 10 years, and she's not having it, well, then they're just going to get into revenge mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Wicked, I think, is a great word to describe those girls. They're beautiful young women. They're smart. They are loyal to each other. Uh, they are plagued with their own problems, but they fight side by side. And they're good girls, but <coughs> it doesn't mean they're always right. Now, with um, Hope's bloodline, if she kills, she becomes werewolf. If she dies, she becomes vampire, I believe is how it works. But does she get to keep magic in either, either one? Well, interestingly enough, I'm glad you asked that question because we have never said that on camera. What would happen to Hope if she died? Um, we've speculated. We've wondered. I mean, the, the storyline on the originals right now is very much that. Uh, if Hope does not survive this, will she be dead? What will happen to her? Uh, and so I can't say much, obviously, because there's two, still two episodes to go. Uh, anything could happen to her. <coughs> uh, and, but we'll, we'll be revealing those rules along the way as they come up. Can you tell us more about that hot oh, oil you mentioned? Oh, yeah. So Raphael is 
uh, the foster brother of Landon Kirby, who's the character we're going to meet this week on the originals. Uh, and he is a newly transformed werewolf uh, who has a, a, a story about how he triggered his curse that's pretty tragic, who has lived a rough life uh, and who has a lot of anger that may or may not just be a result of his werewolf genes or maybe is just a product of his own environment, uh, who is a strongly, fiercely loyal young man, best friends to Landon, <clears throat> really believes in the code, the bro code, and, uh, and, and the difference, the clear difference between right and wrong. Uh, and he's about to enter a world where everything's going to change for him. It's going to kind of shake, shake him to his core. Uh, he'll think he's finally found a place where he can fit in and be who he, be who he really wants to be, but he'll realize that he's got a lot of like learning about himself to do along the way. Does the shadow of class kind of hang over this school a little bit? I mean, the name is Nicholson and really reverberates yeah. the fan base, but the school yeah. may not have that same feeling about the name. <laughs> yeah, the school. <laughs> so in the first episode, uh, Hope is is showing uh, this new kid the volumes of Mystic Falls history, and she pulls out Volume Three, the originals, and like turns to the Klaus Michelson chapter, um, and 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 she said he's not very popular around here, <laughs> as we're standing in the Stefan Salvatore Memorial Library. <laughs> Is there any chance for um, cameos? Or I know you only are having 13 episodes to work with right now, so... Um... There's definitely a chance for cameos. We're writing them in as we go, and we'll see if they if they live in the script, if the actors say yes. I mean, we, we would love to see Bonnie Bennett. We have, you know, we have a lot of fun talking about what we could do with Jeremy Gilbert. Um, and, you know, the characters that have lived and died, is there any way to see them again? Uh, I love doing that, as you know. So the door is open, and then it just becomes about schedule and interest and logistics. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.